The last generation Acura RL was a great car from the start and introduced many industry firsts. However, it quickly became forgotten in the automotive industry to its lack of competitiveness and anything to set itself apart in the mid-sized luxury sedan class. Introduced just last year, the Acura RLX was a replacement for the aging RL and still somewhat carries on with its biggest flaw of not distinguishing itself from the crowd. But is the RLX a worthy mid-sized luxury sedan? Well, let's go ahead and find out and check out this 2015 Acura RLX. Now as far as styling goes on the RLX, this is certainly a very elegant and classy looking vehicle but it's not the most striking design in the world. If you're looking for a more sporty mid-sized luxury sedan, the Acura TLX is certainly a better option. This is more of a luxury highway cruiser. Now certainly my favorite design element is the jewel eye LED headlights and this was actually the first Acura to introduce it. You'll find the jewel eye LED headlights on all of Acura's vehicles nowadays. But overall, the styling is also pretty handsome too. Now coming to the key fob, fairly high quality looking key fob design, you have all of your basic stuff like your lock, unlock, to release your trunk and then your panic button. Now our RLX we have here is pretty loaded. It comes with the advanced package as well as the technology package. and. That rolls in pretty much all of your modern safety technology goodies as well as the navigation system too. Now not much has changed for the 2015 model year for the RLX. However, the RLX Sport Hybrid will still be on sale but Acura says it will continue to be designated as a 2014 model. For the regular RLX we have here, the advanced option package now includes a heated steering wheel. It is the gilded computer metallic exterior color with smart key access on all four doors. You also do have a beige leather interior. Power driver seat with power recline and four way power lumbar. Now stepping on inside of the vehicle here, certainly a very comfortable and lavish interior. But for Acura's biggest sedan in their lineup, you would expect that the interior is to be very opulent. Now you do have push button ignition, just put your foot on the brake and hit the button to start. And what you're hearing there is a three and a half liter V6. Now you do have a full leather wrapped steering wheel. Overall I really do love this three spoke design. Coming to your transmission you have a six speed automatic and then if you click on the sport mode button right here you can actually shift the vehicle manually via the paddle shifters. Putting the vehicle into reverse also displays your rear view camera of course with guidance lines and you also do have trajectory. You can also change the views of the rear view camera too. If you click down on the dial right here you have a top down view, a wide angled view, and then your normal view too. We also do have an electronic parking brake as well. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on the lights and the hazards too. Automatic driver's side window. And I'm going to go ahead and pop up the hood, check out the engine bay. Heated exterior mirrors with LED turn signal indicators. You also do have these 19 inch chrome wheels. Not really sure if I'm a big fan of them, however. I guess it does spice up a little bit of things on the exterior. Love the LED headlights, however. Then you also do have LEDs for the low beam and high beam. Front parking sensors too.
Now under the hood here we have a 3.5 liter V6 producing 310 horsepower at 6500 RPM and 272 pound-feet of torque at 4500 RPM with EPA estimates being 20 in the city and 31 on the highway running on premium unleaded fuel. Overall this is actually a pretty smooth and refined powertrain delivering ample amounts of power here. It's also very quiet too. Now as far as pricing goes of the RLX, it starts at around $47,000 and can easily go all the way up to $60,000. As far as competitors go of the vehicle, you have the Hyundai Genesis, BMW 5 Series, Lexus GS, as well as the Cadillac CTS. Our RLX's MSRP is also at $61,345. Coming to the rear you have LED tail lamps, rear parking sensors, rear window defroster, as well as a shark fin antenna on the top right there. And you also do have rear reflectors too. All of your basic power amenities, power windows, power door locks, power mirrors, they also do power fold too. Nice soft touch armrest. Really do love this wood grain interior trim. Looks very high quality. And let's go ahead and rev it up. Very nice. Now as far as build quality and materials go inside of the RLX here, it certainly matches its competitors in terms of its materials and build quality. You have nice soft touch materials up here on the upper door panel, mid door panel, armrest, dashboard is also nice and soft touch. Then right here too, it's decently padded. And then you have a lot of stitching going throughout everywhere inside of this vehicle. And build quality is actually pretty excellent too. Everything fits well together for the most part. So overall, say, decent interior with pretty good build quality and materials and it certainly can match its competitors in terms of that. Now coming to the steering wheel, decent looking design here and fairly stylish overall. You have your steering wheel mounted audio controls, voice recognition, Bluetooth phone controls, heated steering wheel. You can also change your different media source too adaptive cruise control and then your lane keeping assist too. And it'll display up here if it's on or off. Coming over here you have your regular cruise control and then this little dial right here selects your different vehicle information which I'll get to a little later in the video. The steering wheel also does tilt and telescope too. I also do love how the steering wheel rim feels in my hands. It has decent grip. Coming over here you have your lane departure warning your parking sensors button and then your traction control off button. Right here you have your memory seat settings for two people also. Coming up there you have your auto dimming rear view mirror, garage home link, power rear sunshade, interior illumination lighting which are LEDs, sunglass container, and your sunroof with your sunroof controls. And then you have your roadside assistance too. And then you can actually talk to a live person if you need any help. Really do love this headliner. It's also really nice and soft and very high quality. Now coming down here, I really do love this wood grain interior trim. However, it can leave some scratches at times. Now you do have your ventilated and heated front seats. 
little storage cubby with a 12 volt power outlet as you can see cup holders then coming to the center console lid also a really nice and soft touch of course then down there you will find your USB port auxiliary input and another 12 volt power outlet you also do have this tray right here too pretty nice also the inside of this center console is pretty high quality line with felt Now as far as the seats go, I think these are a little too firm and it's not the best seats for a long road trip. And I think these seats would be a lot better if they didn't have so much bolstering. They're just a little firm in my opinion and this isn't really a sporty driving vehicle here. It's more of a luxury highway cruiser so they just need a little bit more comfortable seats. Thigh support is okay however. As far as visibility goes inside of this vehicle, it's excellent. Lots of glass area all around. I could see out of this vehicle pretty well. Rearward visibility is pretty good and then outward visibility too. Side glass area shows quite a lot too. Now coming to your gauges. The gauges are pretty nice overall. You have your speedometer and I love the bold crisp and clear font. And then you have your RPM gauge right there. Coming to that little center screen like I said, it shows you your vehicle information. You have what gear you're in, your exterior temperature readout, as well as your trip odometer. It also gives you your fuel range, your average fuel economy. Gives you a little bar right there too. And then you can change your vehicle settings. You have your tire pressure monitoring, oil life percentage, a compass. And it shows you your adaptive cruise control in your lane keeping assist then your average speed, elapsed time various amounts of things now coming to your climate controls this isn't the simplest or most easy to use system in the business and it's kinda weird because it's like an integration between the touchscreen and these hard touch traditional buttons right here which is pretty interesting to be honest but you do have dual zone automatic climate control to select your temperatures you have this dial right here and then for your fan speeds it's pretty weird you have to go to the touch screen to do that I would just love a regular dial for your fan speeds and if your front passenger is new to your car they certainly won't get your climate controls straight off the bat you have your front window defroster, rear window defroster, and your heated exterior side mirrors. And then you have to go up here for your recycling mode too. But you can also select your temperatures from the touchscreen too. Now coming to this screen right here, I love the responsiveness of this screen. Basically you could select all your different audio sources. You have your AM, FM, XM, satellite, radio. Your optical disk drive, which is your CD player. You also do have a hard drive on here. USB port, iPod integration, Bluetooth streaming audio. And then you also do have your Pandora internet radio, AHA internet radio, which you can access through your smartphone data connection. And then your auxiliary input. But the best part about this screen is certainly its responsiveness. It's lightning quick. And you also do get haptic feedback too, which is pretty nice. Not all vehicles do that. And then you have your different presets, which you can do up to 12. Coming to these set of buttons down here, basically this controls that screen up there. This is for your navigation system, as well as your phone. Coming to the nav, the rendering and the graphics of this nav are certainly getting very dated. It works pretty well overall but they've been using this same basic system for years now. I think it's been since like 03. But you can enter in the destination by voice or you can manually enter it in with the address and go by city, street, house number, zip code, everything like that. You also do have a day and night mode for this screen up here too. You have your address book right here or you can just simply go home. You can select your different route options too which is pretty nice. You can view the different routes that are available. Coming to your phone right there basically you can hook up your Bluetooth phone and then have an integrated dial pad and have your contacts stored all in there. This is pretty much the same system 
that you will find on many of Honda's products. It's basically just carryover. Coming to info, you have your trip computer, voice info, traffic incidents. You also do have live traffic and live weather on this bad boy too. Then your calendar. You could change the clock and the wallpaper right here too. Then you have your audio. Basically shows you what radio station you're on, what song is playing, everything like that. And then you can select your different presets right there too. But basically, to select everything, you have to go through this dial right here. So overall, this isn't the most simple or, or easy to use interface, but I do love the graphics and the rendering, and I really do love this touchscreen only because of its responsiveness. However, I wish they would just put everything on one touchscreen. That is my major gripe about this whole interface. Now definitely the best part about driving the RLX here is certainly the 3.5 liter V6 because the engine is pretty smooth and quiet overall. It provides a decent amount of power and should suit most buyers pretty well. However, with that being said, there are some competitors that do offer more notably quicker engines and more powerful powertrains too, like V8 options and turbocharged powertrains. And the 3.5 liter V6 is certainly not the most powerful powertrain in the class. Now as far as the ride quality goes, fitted with these 19 inch wheels, the ride quality isn't all that great and the RLX's main intent is to be a luxury highway cruiser and it's just not all that comfortable riding. There are some vehicles in this class that do ride more comfortably. As far as handling goes, handling isn't the best in the class either. The Audi A6 as well as the Lexus GS do handle much better than the RLX here. And the steering is pretty numb overall. So driving this vehicle it's not the most entertaining to drive or it's not the most comfortable riding vehicle either. And the driving dynamics are just not all that great. All right. And let's go ahead and shut down the RLX. Let's go ahead and check out the rest of the vehicle. Trunk space is okay. You do have a ski trunk pass through back here. Now build quality and materials back here at least do follow through. You have rear sunshades back here, which is a pretty nice amenity. Now sitting back here, I think the best part about the RLX is that it's pretty spacious feeling overall inside of here. We do have dual map pockets, heated rear seats, and then you have your power rear, rear window sunshade button right there. Rear air vents as well. And then rear center armrest with cup holders too. But overall it's very very comfortable back here. I would certainly take this vehicle on a longer trip if I was sitting back here. Then you also do have your LED interior lights. Leg room, there's lots of it. And then the headroom is also pretty good too. It's pretty wide feeling back here. All right. Full power passenger seat with power recline and four way power lumbar. Glove box compartment, nice and damp and lined with felt. So even though the Acura RLX is a budget-minded vehicle and lacks the prestige of some of its competitors, it still fails to set itself apart in the mid-sized luxury sedan class. However, it does check off most boxes for most luxury car buyers. The best part about the RLX is certainly the amounts of luxury it has as well as technology available. So remember that this is Cameron Birch from Cameron's Car Reviews.